everyone. Since attaching a drill to my 3D printer, we've demonstrated cutting acrylic and making our own PCBs. And in this video, I'll be attempting to cut plywood. This is six millimeter thick plywood. And I'll be using a 1.5 millimeter two flute end mill. Well, that's the plan. Let's see if it's possible. I purchased the 1.5 millimeter two flute end mills from Banggood. In a pack of five, there is little as 72 cents each. And I figure with five of them, that'll give me some room to play. So if I snap one of these accidentally, or if they go blunt after a while, there are some spares there ready to go. And for the plywood, I've picked this up from the local hardware store. This is six millimeter marine grade plywood. It doesn't come in these small squares, unfortunately. You buy this in much larger sheets. Uh, this particular one was 1220 millimeters by 610 millimeters, which is far too large to slide into the 3D printer. So getting them chopped down to 200 millimeters by 200 millimeters uh, is very convenient. If the hardware store you go to has a cutting service, the first Bunnings warehouse I went to didn't have a cutting service, the second one did, and that saved me a lot of time cutting these down myself, and now I have a whole stack of them ready to practice with. And just to check to see if this plywood is actually six millimeters in thickness, use my calipers here to measure the thickness. And would you look at that? Approximately 5.8 millimeters. Pretty close, but not exactly six. When buying a sheet of plywood from the hardware store, have a good look at the sheet that you've chosen and make sure that it doesn't have excessive bowing along the length of that sheet. We want the, the uh, sheet of plywood to be as flat and level as possible on the build platform. Any major Z-axis variances will mean that some areas may not be cut all the way through. And as I've mentioned in the previous videos, you don't want to stick your material directly down to your print surface as there's a good chance you'll be drilling into the print surface as you go through uh, the plywood. So seeing as I have stacks and stacks of these uh, 20 centimeter squares of plywood, I guess I'll use one as a sacrificial piece. So I'll use double sided tape to stick one of these down. And then using that same double sided tape, I'll lay another six millimeter piece of plywood on top of that one, stick that one down and we're good to go. And I've just stuck on a second piece of plywood on top of the sacrificial piece of plywood. So as you can see, it's now double the thickness. And now to install the end mill into the flexible shaft. I'll insert the key. Using the wrench to undo the nut underneath. Unscrew that. The collet is still in the flexible shaft, inserting the end mill, tighten that back down with the nut, and lastly with the wrench. And to ensure the plywood is level with respect to the end mill we've just installed, use the thumb screws on either side of the print surface, front and back, to ensure that there's no Z height variance between the tip of the end mill and the top of the plywood. This end mill is an upcut style end mill. That means when it cuts into the material, it's going to try to pull up and away the waste material from the area that it's cutting, which is generally what we want. But with the top surface of this plywood, when we're grabbing into it and pulling up and out, there's a chance that we'll be splintering the surface as it is quite fibrous along the grain of the top of the plywood. 
However, when we go through to the other end of the plywood, as it's still pulling up, it's going to actually be pulling in the bottom surface of the plywood up. So we would, we would expect less chipping and flaring up of the bottom section of the plywood. You can buy compression end mills, which are both up and down end mill, but in these small sizes, this is only 1.5 millimeters, they're quite expensive. So I'm just gonna stick with these cheapo uh, 1.5 millimeter two flute upcuts, and we'll see if we can mitigate any of the flaring or if it's just as easy to sand it away after the cut is finished. For our first test in cutting this plywood, we'll start by cutting a simple 20 millimeter square. So all we have to do is home the z-axis and all we do there is simply rest the tip of the end mill onto the top of the plywood, turn on the Dremel tool and send in the g-code. And just before we begin, don't forget to wear your safety equipment. I'll be wearing eye protection, hearing protection and some respiratory protection. Okay, that just finished. It took just over two minutes to cut that square. It's gone all the way through obviously as it was ready to just pop out of there. Let me quickly vacuum this up and we'll take a closer look. And here is the 20 millimeter squared milled out of 6mm plywood on our 3D printer. Not bad for a first cut. Obviously you can see there's quite a lot of uh, fibre and wood that has been left over from the cutting process, especially along the grain. You can see the, the grain pattern going from left to right here, and that's where the majority of this fibrous material is. But when it's cutting against the grain, there's not a lot there. That should be quite easy to sand. And if we have a look underneath, we look along the grain, there's no flaring at all. It's a clean cut, but against the grain, we still have just a little bit of those fibers sticking up there that need to be sanded down, but no chipping. Looks like the top of the surface there is completely chip free and same with underneath. So once we sand away uh, just this leftover material here, that should be a nice clean flat surface. And also you'll notice the sides of the cut uh, is not burnt at all. I didn't smell any burning while this was cutting and traveling at five millimeters a second That's a decent speed for cutting into you know something like this. I was going down only one millimeter uh, Per pass so there was approximately six rotations uh, to complete this cut which is uh, Definitely attainable with our 3d printers. It was uh, more than rigid enough to uh, cope with cutting this material at that speed and depth Okay, let's try cleaning away all those fibers on the edges of this square. I just have some sandpaper here. This is 800 grit sandpaper. I'm just going to uh, sand away just the corners. Already you can see, even though I didn't do much, it's almost completely clean. I'll just pull those fibers off. That side is already done. That was very fast. We'll do this side here now. Pull those fibers off. Try sanding upwards. And after a few seconds of sanding away at each edge, that is now a cleanly cut piece of plywood. A trick that I've read online to help reduce the amount of chipping and flaring on the top surface of cutting into a material like plywood is to use blue painter's tape. Just to put a strip along the top surface so when the top of the end mill cuts into the plywood, the adhesive of the tape should maintain the bond of the, uh, of the top surface 
vastly reducing the number of these chips that we see here. So I might try that for this next cut. I'll, I'll put a, a piece of blue painter's tape about here somewhere and we'll begin the cut. For our next test, we'll be cutting this. This is a NEMA 17 motor mount with attachment to 2020 aluminium extrusion. This is six millimeters thick to emulate the thickness of the plywood. And I've split cutting this into three operations. On the left hand side, the first operation will cut all the holes within this part. The second operation will cut out an indent for the M5 by 10 millimeter screws. And lastly, the final operation will cut out this piece from the plywood itself. <laughs> Okay, that just finished. That took a bit over 13 minutes to complete that cut. Let's see if we can dig out our part. Hopefully it's cut all the way through. Oh yes, look at that. Might vacuum this before I get sawdust everywhere. And here is our NEMA 17 motor mount cut out of 6mm plywood on our 3D printers. It took only 13 minutes to cut this piece, which, I, which is I guess equivalent to 3D printing this particular shape out of plastic. Let's start by removing the blue painter's tape on the top surface to see if that had any beneficial impact to reducing the number of um, fibers flaring up from the top surface of the plywood. Well, looking at that side, there is no flaring up whatsoever. So that's a good start. This side here still has quite a few fibers along the grain of the, of the plywood, but they're easy enough to just pull away. And I guess the last test is where the uh, M5 uh, 10 millimeter screws have been recessed into the top of the plywood. Still looks like, yeah, still looks like the. Um, the wood fibers are still splayed out so I'm not sure I think the jury's out on if putting blue painters tape along, along the top is actually beneficial because it looks like I'll still have to do a bit of sanding on this to clean it up and after a few minutes of sanding this is what the cleaned NEMA 17 motor mount looks like. It's come out quite well. No real splintering along the top surface. All the features seem to have come through unscathed. 
and looking underneath, the holes have been drilled through without pushing out the plywood as well. It's also quite clean. The indents for the M5 screws are definitely present. And I'll just say, this is 6mm plywood. Very, very stiff. I think um, if you printed this out in PLA or ABS, I think you would have a bit more flex than what I'm experiencing here. This does not want to flex at all. Well, let's see how it works. I have a NEMA 17 motor here. Fits on the top. You can see the holes line up into the motor. Have some fixings here as well. M3 by 10 millimeter screws. And that is now ready to be installed into 2020 aluminium extrusion. Let's test it out. And there you have it, cutting 6mm plywood with a rotary tool attached to our 3D printers. Well, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. Thanks to everyone on Patreon, and I'll catch you next time.